Hello ladies and gentlemen, it is Jackal here, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a threaded port scanner in Python. So, first I just want to say the link to the Discord and the credit for the music used in this video are both in, de in the description. So if you want to check either of those out, feel free to do so. And I also want to uh, shout out Pineapple for starting the series. He did a regular unthreaded port scanner. As a result, it took a little while to scan, and I'm going to be uh, helping you guys out who want a faster port scanner in this video. So first, let's start with the prerequisites. Um, you're going to need Python, pip, and an IDE. Uh, I will have all the um, tutorials on how to install those in the description. Uh, so just find the tutorial for each one, Python, pip, and an IDE. Uh, follow them get all your stuff sorted and then come back to the video next you'll need to install a module for Python called Colorama and to do so you're just going to open up a CMD terminal um, and type pip install Colorama for me I get a requirement already satisfied error but yours should install just fine so onto the video we are going to first import socket You're then going to import threading, import concurrent.futures, import colorama from colorama import for colorama.init. So this is what we're going to be using to connect to the IP and check if the port uh, we are looking on is open. Uh, this is going to be used for something called a print lock, which we will discuss later. Concurrent.futures is going to be used for the threading, the actual loop that scans all the ports. Uh, Colorama will just be used to color the application and make it not look nice and cool. So the first right thing we're going to do is define a variable called IP, set it equal to input with the prompt of enter IP to scan. I'll put it V there, put that a little more proper. Um, essentially, input is a uh, function that takes the uh, uh, string parameter, and this is essentially the prompt that the user sees before they enter their value. Next, we are doing, going to define a function called scan that takes the arguments IP and port. Here, we are going to define a, uh, or initialize, make an instance of socket. So we're going to do scanner, equals socket dot socket socket dot af inet this is uh, ipv4 specifying that we'll be using ipv4 to connect to any outside hosts and then socket dot sock stream aka tcp saying we are going to be using the tcp protocol Next, we are going to set the timeout. This is how long the scanner will wait on a closed port to continue to the next one. So, uh, and this will be in seconds, so we'll just do scanner dot set timeout one second. So it'll wait one second before it continues on to the next port and decides that the port is closed. So, now we're going to create a try block in which we will put scanner.connect. Connect is a function that takes a tuple, hence the two parentheses, on each side. In this tuple, we're going to put IP and port except pass. This is something you usually don't want to do. But in this case, it's fine since you pretty much the only thing that can go wrong with this is that you do not connect. Next, we are going to immediately, uh, if it does connect, we're going to immediately disconnect with scanner.close. And then we are going to print uh, a formatted string uh, port encased in brackets. Oops. And we are going to color this white. Four meaning foreground, white meaning white. Uh, so this will color the foreground of this port white. 
Uh, formatted string allows you to substitute in variables through the use of curly brackets. So just surround any variable name in curly brackets and it will then put that variable in a string. Next, we are going to add for dot green. And the string that we will be making green is opened. So essentially, we're going to have a white port and then next to it is going to be the word opened in green. So it'll be nice and fancy for the user. Um, here, we're going to want to create something called a print lock, which will be equal to threading.lock. And then here we are going to use the print lock to print out this line. This will uh, essentially make sure so that when multiple threads are running, uh, neither they won't print the same thing or they won't try to print at the same time. So it'll be nice line by line printed stuff and easy to read. So next we're going to get into the threading part. So we're just going to do with concurrent dot futures dot thread pool executor as executor so we've essentially just packaged this big thing into one little variable called executor and then for port in range 1000 so we're going to be scanning um, a range of a thousand ports we are going to use executor to submit or call the scan function with the variables IP and port. Next, we are going to set the maximum amount of workers, which will be 100. I found that this works best for this particular task. Um, you may find differently. Just find your your hotspot for your computer, um, and uh, yeah, should work well. And we are actually going to do port plus one because I don't think port zero exists. So now that that's all fine and dandy, we're going to, oops, hit my mic there. We're going to fire up the program and see how it runs. Python scanner.py, oops, Python scanner.py. We're going to scan google.com. It works with both both host names and regular IPs such as 1.1.1.1. Hit enter here. It immediately finds 53 and 80 opened. Then 443 and I believe 853 is also open. Yeah, 853. And then it will close once it is done. This will also work for regular host names such as google.com. Oh, gotta run it first. That helps. So google.com, 80, 443 as well, I believe. And then that's all Google has. And then we can also scan uh, something like Omegle, I guess. Omegle.com, 80 is obviously opened. Pretty much any, any website you scan, 80 is going to be open. Um, as well as 443, those are the two common... Um, web traffic ports so um, anyways I hope you guys enjoyed that is the end of the video um, thank you for watching and have a good one peace